Without further ado, we've got an incredible lineup uh, of directors, uh, really adventurous films, and uh, let's bring them up. I don't think they need any introduction. Lisa Cholodenko, Deborah Granick, and John Cameron Mitchell. When you were when you were growing up, was there was there a moment when you knew you wanted to be a director, or was was there a, a director who inspired you? I think I might have been already grown up when I saw a film that I recognized um, kind of the auteur, or the author behind the film. Um, it was Jane Campion's early film, Sweetie. Mm. And I was in my early 20s, and I think I was in another country, and I went and saw it by myself. I don't remember where I was, but I saw it by myself. And it was a really exhilarating, singular experience of watching this film and recognizing all of a sudden that there is this person behind a camera that is having, you know, <clears throat> a vision. And, um, you know, not only that, but that she was a woman, and that... Um, there were some things that were communicated in that film that I, f for the first time, was kind of gobsmacked in a way, especially the end of the film where I thought, oh my God, you can say really transgressive, taboo things. You know, it wasn't like Pasolini or something. It was something about, you know, un like familial, unconditional love is a myth, you know, that, I mean, it, it seemed like incredibly radical and taboo to me to say something like that and or communicate something like that. And it was, um, I felt a real charge. I was like, oh my God, this is such a powerful medium. Were you thinking of yourself when you were doing theater when you were younger, as primarily as a director or as an actor or, or was it I'm all? really a writer. As, I started as a out writer. thinking as a writer and then in high uh, theater was, was uh, banned in my Catholic high school even though we had this chemistry teacher who looked like a Super Mario brother named Father Falbo, who had a, a motorcycle and was a leather queen. <laughs> and the, the, last, the last show that was canceled was his reproduction, this is in a tiny Catholic school in Albuquerque, his reproduction of Peter Brook's Midsummer Night's, Dreams, <laughs> Midsummer Night's Dream on trapezes. <laughs> and then theater was canceled. Um, <laughs> And then it came back, and my first play was a Pinter play that I ever did in high school, The Birthday Party by Harold Pinter. So I had a weird kind of, you know, but start kind of more, I was, feel like I'll end up writing a novel in Northern California with no cell phone. <laughs> I know that fantasy. <laughs> and Deborah? I think um, my first awareness that I was getting really enraptured by watching films and wanted to watch a lot of them was actually through documentary. And um, I mean, that's separate from just the sheer enjoyment of, ch of films in childhood. Um, but in terms of the mechanics of making it and what it meant to record very specific um, periods of time, very specific choices of lifestyle, very specific um, idiosyncrasies that people have, the documentation of certain kinds of subcultures, and also documentation of life lives that I could never know that and I remember being hit really hard by Barbara Koppel's film Harlan County and then again by the meatpacking strike and um, simultaneously really hugely turned on to the to salesmen and to some of the verite of, of that period you know I, I was just left with this feeling like God you know you couldn't figure out those guys costumes unless you got to meet them and, and photograph them, you couldn't figure out how they actually start their Bible sales, how they knock, what they do at night in the motel room with each other, you know. You wouldn't, I, I don't know, it just became this, um, this route of entry to understand stories and lives and, and, and human behavior. Each one of these nights has been unique and very different from what you see out there uh, because a lot of the times directors are just caught up promoting one particular film and in this series we kind of explore uh, their body of work and we bring out their collaborators and I think directors are very happy to share the stage with their collaborators. You know, I just think that like had there not been a kind of independent film movement and it was really thriving when I was going to film school in the 90s, um, 
you know, I'm not sure how I would have found my way. And uh, it's been it's been sort of everything to me. That's really how I came up. I've been nurtured by the independent film world. Um, you know, the IFP now fine has been a great kind of support system. I, you know, been involved on and off for a long time. My first film, High Art, was uh, nominated for many things, and uh, Ali Sheedy won the acting prize, and, uh, you know, I was on the jury one year. So I've, I keep coming in and out of this organization, and I feel like it's, it's really important in the face of, you know, kind of how middle brow mainstream cinema can be. It's keeping original voices alive. I was saved by it personally. Some people were saved by rock and roll. I was saved by independent film. And uh, it allowed me to exercise some demons, exercise some muscles I don't usually exercise when I was an actor. Uh, and But there's other forms. There's television that can do that too now. There's a uh, uh, webisodes, just different ways of getting your narrative cinematic rocks off. But when I'm in a place like this, is very inspiring because we don't even have a you know a landmark in New York where there's a kind of large gathering place where people can come and experience the same thing in a theater. And it's not it's more challenging. I think it's importance to me, and I think it's relevance is that there is there is less censorship there is less decision of what the content and how it should be done and who should play it you know, less calculation of what that all will add up to as a formula and I think that the room for introducing new talent exists in independent cinema I think that it's not that it's easy but there's at least the chance you know and I think um, I just like the idea that it would be less um, focus on what a sort of combination will yield in terms of dollars. An independent film doesn't have to make oodles of money. It can just fulfill itself. It could make the investors whole. So you're using so much less capital. You're, you know, you're using just a lot less resources. And you don't have to please so many people. And within that, I mean, you still want to deliver a very strong, 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 good, well-told story and repay your investors. All those you know, structures exist. But within that, the investor may really want to champion a film that no one else in that bigger system would ever even consider. So there still is some kind of independence in there. After all those layers, there's something that really matters. It's vital.